Why are you getting in my way? Since I said I'm going to live here, I will. Take everything unnecessary outside and quickly bring in my stuff my mother-in-law ordered. As she loudly declared this outside the store I manage, my husband Sean, who was next to her, simply chuckled. At that moment, a car painted black pulled up with a sound. My name is Shelly, and I am 31 years old. Sean and I got married four years ago. His father passed away from an illness when Sean was still young, and his mother raised him alone. Sean graduated from university and got a job in a local manufacturing company. He is kind-hearted and soft-spoken, easily swayed by others, which makes a career advancement among his ambitious colleagues unlikely. I graduated from university and initially worked at a cosmetics company, but I never gave up on my dream of becoming an esthetician. While working, I attended beauty school at night, and after graduating, I trained at a top esthetician's shop. The reason I continued to pursue this dream was that I had always been self-conscious about the shape of my face since I was young, continually receiving hurtful comments about it. However, in high school, while strolling through town with friends, I got a free trial coupon for an aesthetic treatment and decided to try it that day with a friend. The shop was white and clean, filled with a comforting scent. A very beautiful aesthetician took care of me. I was instantly captivated by the charm of the place she listened to my concerns attentively and provided a genuine treatment despite it being free. I will never forget the surprise I felt when I looked in the mirror after the treatment. She said, it is our job to solve problems and bring out people's confidence. I was moved by her words and felt tears welling up. This experience made me strongly feel that I wanted to help others, which led me to choose this profession. Sean and I met through a friend's introduction and as we went on several dates, we grew closer and got married after about two years of dating. Sean is gentle but weak-willed, which balanced well with my strong personality. At least, that was the case until his mother appeared. When we exchanged greetings for marriage, his mother repeatedly asked us to live with her at her home in the suburbs, which was inconvenient for commuting. We managed to convince her otherwise and started our married life alone. Then, a year ago, I quit the company I was with and was able to open my own aesthetic salon, a dream I had for many years. I used to juggle part-time jobs, but starting my own business has led to days much busier than before, causing more frequent mismatches in the life Sean and I share. Still, we made efforts to maintain our bond as a couple such as having breakfast together and reporting our homecoming times. One evening, as I returned home late, Sean, who would usually be asleep by then, was waiting for me and began talking with a serious expression. Shelley, actually, there's something my mother consulted me about. As he spoke, he revealed, actually, my mother has accumulated debts and it's come to the point where she has to sell our family home. I couldn't help but express my surprise. What? His mother had always been reckless with money and led an unplanned life. He further explained that his mother had used the money his father had saved for Sean's tuition, forcing Sean to rely on scholarships for university. This spendthrift behavior was the reason I had adamantly refused to live with her when we were newly married. The sale of her house meant she would have nowhere to live. I felt a heavy sense of unease about this situation. Hey, can we let my mother live with us, Sean said. But I quickly interjected before he could finish. It's impossible. We absolutely cannot live together. I don't mean to speak ill of your mother, but she would end up dipping into our living expenses. Isn't your mother still working? She should rent an apartment with her income and live alone. I appealed strongly to Sean, desperately wanting to avoid living together. It pained me to criticize his mother, 
but it was unavoidable. No, actually, there are debts that can't be covered even by selling the family home. So, I suggested cutting expenses to allocate more towards debt repayment. Sean replied, You can't just decide that. I understand what you're saying, Shelley. I take back what I said earlier, and I'll talk to her about living on her own, he said. But I was skeptical. Sean always seems to accept my opinion in my presence, but he becomes speechless in front of his mother. I was deeply anxious that his mother might eventually force us into living together. Sure enough, the next day, I received a call from his mother. Shelly, this is terrible. Do you really dislike the idea of living with me that much? I held back when you two first got married, thinking you were both newlyweds, but this time it's unavoidable. I'm about to lose my home. Even if we're not blood-related, what kind of cruel daughter-in-law are you to abandon a mother my mother-in-law vehemently criticized me? I'm sorry, but I must oppose it. Our house is too small for even the two of us, so we cannot provide another room I explained calmly to my mother-in-law, but my calmness only angered her further. It's unacceptable for a wife to go against her husband's words. I will retrain you to be a proper wife, so be prepared, she said, and abruptly hung up the phone. This was another reason why I refused to live together. I've always struggled with my mother-in-law's domineering personality. It's always frustrating how Sean gets swept up in her assertiveness and becomes submissive. The next day, despite it being early dawn, my mother-in-law showed up at our house. Sean, Shelley, are you there? I've come to talk, so open up quickly, she called out loudly without using the intercom and banged on the door. Considering the nuisance to the neighbors, I quickly let her inside, but she ignored me and went straight to wake Sean, who was still asleep. I have to move out of that house by next week. Don't worry about what this daughter-in-law says, quickly start preparing for my sake, she said, hitting Sean on the back. I wondered how a man over 30 could be treated like this by his mother, but I couldn't just stand by and watch. Mother, please calm down a bit I intervened, to which she directed a sharp gaze at me. How can I calm down? This situation is your fault. It's because of your selfishness she snapped. Tension filled the air between us. Sean, witnessing the scene, said Mom, I'm sorry, I'll figure something out, just wait a little longer, and suddenly began to apologize earnestly. Seeing his pitiable state, I was dumbfounded. However, my mother-in-law seemed somewhat satisfied with his response. You have one more week. Make sure you sort it out by then, she said that and then left. Sean, why do you act so helplessly? And what exactly do you plan to do, I asked. As I pressed him, Sean visibly became angry. Be quiet, Shelley. Can't you show a bit more understanding? Why am I always the one being blamed, he shouted, and then covered his head with a blanket. Sean raising his voice was unheard of, and I began to feel anxious that something unusual might happen this time. And my premonition was right the situation worsened. The next week, as set by my mother-in-law, she and Sean took an unexpected action. That day, I visited the bank in the morning for my work as a president and planned to head to the store in the afternoon. The store opens in the afternoon, so I had left the preparations to my staff. However, before opening, I received a call from my staff informing me of a serious issue at the store, urging me to come quickly. I changed my plans and hurried to the store. To my surprise, when I arrived, my mother-in-law and Sean were confidently walking around inside. What are you doing? Customers will be arriving soon, so please leave, I said. There were several beds in the store, separated by partitions, but my mother-in-law was lying on the beds and measuring them. What are you talking about? 
This is a viewing, isn't it? There are beds here, and this room is perfect for me. I don't need all of it, but I will use at least half. It's equipped for privacy, and it's discreet, so no worries. But, this bed is a bit small. I'll use two of them, she said, while arranging two beds together by herself. Incredibly, Sean was smiling and agreeing with her plan. Sean, what is this? Moving here is not something I can allow. If this is a joke, stop it right now, I appealed, but I was confused by the unexpected actions of my mother-in-law and Sean. If it becomes public that someone is actually living in the aesthetician's store, it could lead to a credibility issue. My store has been highly rated for its emphasis on hygiene. Thanks to this, many customers have supported us. However, I could not allow their selfish actions to threaten that reputation. Please stop this and leave. We are about to start business and we have many reservations. If you continue to stay here, I will call the police, I shouted. Hearing the word police, my mother-in-law and Sean showed a slight disturbance. Let's leave it at this for today. However, I don't have time. I am definitely planning to live here, she declared and left with Sean. I apologized to the staff while quickly tidying up and organizing the store. I had anticipated my mother-in-law being unreasonable, but I did not expect Sean to participate in such actions. I was deeply shocked by this fact. It was clear from Sean's expression that he had decided to side with his mother. That night, Sean did not return home. I wondered if Sean was avoiding me or if he just didn't care what happened anymore. Still, I had to make sure that something like this didn't happen again. So I called Sean. Hello, Sean. Ah, hello. Sean sounded reluctant to speak. Please tell me today's actions of your mother were a joke. If she starts living in the store, it will be ruined instantly. As you know, this store thrives on customer trust. If your mother tries anything strange again, you must stop her. Do you understand? Sean didn't respond to my firm words and hung up the phone. Seeing his reaction, I realized something. Sean couldn't resist his mother's constant pressure and ultimately chose to stand by her. It seemed psychologically easier for him to comply with his mother's demands. He had a problem with dependency on his mother. But this meant that a real crisis was looming for my store. I was deeply troubled. How should I protect the store I love? I spent the night thinking about it, and before I knew it, it was morning. The next day was a day off for my salon, but driven by a bad premonition, I went to the store. As I nervously cleaned, suddenly, a large truck stopped in front of the store. I instinctively sensed something. I rushed outside to see movers beginning to unload furniture and preparing to bring it into the store. When I questioned the workers, indeed, the requester was my mother-in-law and they were trying to bring her furniture into the store. Please wait. I cannot accept this here, I firmly protested but the workers showed no sign of halting their tasks. Naturally, they were just doing their job and had to complete the work they were requested to do. I managed to convince the workers to pause their activities temporarily and hurriedly contacted someone for help. As the workers had other schedules to attend to, they were confused by the interruption and seemed to be contacting my mother-in-law. It appeared that she and Sean would be arriving soon. Eventually, my mother-in-law and Sean appeared. Why are you interfering with me? Since I said I'm going to live here, I will. Take everything unnecessary outside and quickly bring in my stuff my mother-in-law commanded. That's right. Mom is going to live here, starting today, Sean added with a chuckle. Although confused, the workers had to act within the limited time and began following my mother-in-law's orders to move things outside. 
Stop doing as you please, I shouted, and just then, a black luxury car stopped behind the truck. A large man, wearing a double-striped suit and a stylish hat, pulled down low, stepped out of the car. His commanding presence was immediately noticeable, and he exuded an aura that was clearly no ordinary. The man approached with a deep voice. What's all this commotion? Isn't this disturbing the neighborhood? Is this not Shelley? Are you having some trouble? Yes, I am having trouble with people trying to take over my shop and live here, I responded. Hearing this, the man looked towards my mother-in-law and Sean and then calmly asked, it seems there is some sort of trouble here. Is there a reason for this? Overwhelmed by the man's presence, my mother-in-law mustered the courage to retort. What are you talking about? Don't meddle in family matters. This woman is my daughter-in-law, so what's the problem with moving into her house? At that moment, the man gently removed his hat and said, I see. That's what this is about. My daughter has always been well taken care of by you. I hear about it often. Sean, it's been a long time, he said with a warm smile. Father-in-law. Sean stepped back in surprise. This man was, in fact, my father. His appearance was far from ordinary, and Sean had always been intimidated by my family. We didn't have a wedding ceremony, only a meeting between the families, and since then, my father and my mother-in-law had not met. At the meeting, my mother-in-law and Sean were so intimidated by my father's presence that they left hastily without much conversation, and it seemed my mother-in-law did not remember his face. Father-in-law? Ah, it's been a while. My mother-in-law was sweating profusely. No, I haven't said anything significant. I just brought over some belongings because I thought I could live in Shelley's shop. I haven't caused trouble for anyone my mother-in-law explained to my father while urging the workers to continue. You intend to live here? I can't permit that my father said sternly. I own this building. The first floor is rented out as Shelley's aesthetic salon and my daughter and I have a formal contract as the landlords and business operators. It is not permitted to use this place as a residence. If violated, you will need to vacate immediately. Shelley, unfortunately, I have just witnessed a violation. According to the contract, you must vacate immediately. My father's gaze was piercing. I, too, can feel the overwhelming authority in his eyes. I understand. I cannot make any excuses for this violation. We will vacate immediately, I responded. My father nodded heavily and turned his gaze to my mother-in-law and Sean. As you heard, I have just agreed with the tenant to terminate the lease. If you enter here again, I will have to call the police as you are now outsiders. Please leave this place. We will now proceed with the lease termination. Saying that, he led me inside the shop and we closed the shutter in front of my mother-in-law and Sean. My mother-in-law and Sean stood there dazed for a while, but soon I could hear them arguing with the movers. As I listened to the sounds, the movers, needing to rush to their next job, eventually left the belongings on the roadside and departed. Sean, you handle this. For now, bring it to our apartment, my mother-in-law instructed. Sean, following her orders, hurriedly arranged a rental car and began transporting the belongings to our apartment. Watching through a gap in the shutter, I said, it turned out just as expected. They're heading to our apartment. I'm glad I acted promptly. Thank you, Dad. My father's stern demeanor softened and he showed a smile. Maybe I went a bit too far. Despite his intimidating appearance, my father is actually a very kind person. He dresses this way due to his fondness for gangster films, but he is usually a friendly local real estate agent. 
They're sure to be surprised when they arrive at the apartment. My father and I exchanged looks and chuckled quietly to ourselves. In reality, all the furniture and household items from the apartment had already been removed, leaving only Sean's personal belongings behind. After a while, my mother-in-law called, clearly distressed. What happened? The room is empty. Where is the furniture? Her voice was agitated and angry. I responded calmly and deliberately. I have terminated the apartment lease. I was the leaseholder and I made the payments, so it was within my rights to cancel it without any issue. The apartment is owned by my father and we plan to dispose of any remaining belongings as abandoned property and change the lock soon. If you don't collect the personal items quickly, you'll have to meet my father again. Her voice trembled upon hearing my father's name. So, what? Um, where have you moved to? Let us come there, won't you let us stay with you? I answered with a snort. I have just decided to divorce Sean, and we will not live together anymore. I recently told Sean that if you interfere with my shop, I would seek a divorce. He agreed, and I have kept his response as evidence. Due to the influence of you and Sean, I can no longer continue my aesthetic business in this building. Therefore, based on the agreement with Sean, I am proceeding with a divorce. As for the furniture, it belonged to me since before our marriage, and it is only natural that I take it all. Upon hearing this, my mother-in-law began yelling at Sean who was next to her. How can you so easily agree to such a serious decision as divorce? The situation obviously required appropriate handling. I could hear Sean exclaim in surprise, Eek! You should not prolong this issue and look for a new place to live. Instead, I told them before ending the call. Afterward, my mother-in-law and Sean struggled to find a new home and eventually had to rent a house from distant relatives. Sean's commute became difficult, and he quit his job to work part-time at a rural deli while scrambling to pay off his mother's debts. Meanwhile, I was able to move into a property owned by my father immediately. As for the termination of the aesthetic shop's lease, it was actually part of a ploy, and in reality, the business continues to operate as before. Now, the popularity of my aesthetic shop has grown significantly, and it's become so sought after that reservations are difficult to secure, even attracting celebrities. We warmly welcome male clients, and I regularly provide various beauty treatments for my father. Although he is nearing 70, the regular care at our shop has rejuvenated his skin, making him feel a bit closer to the actor he has always admired. Through these experiences, I've come to realize again that the essence of my job is to give each client confidence. The memory of my first free aesthetic treatment when I was in high school remains vividly with me. The excitement and fresh feelings from that day continue to inspire my daily work. That experience taught me what I should offer through my interactions with many customers. I also think about Sean occasionally. If he had more self-confidence, perhaps a different future could have been possible for him. Despite being so close to me, it was difficult to provide him with the right support. His situation has taught me how challenging it can be to offer objective help due to closeness. If, in the future, Sean visits our aesthetic shop. I plan to interact with him impartially and spare no effort in supporting him to maximize his potential confidence. If I can give him the courage to take a new step forward, I believe it would be profoundly meaningful.